Welcome to Rich Conversations. I'm trying something a little different today in addition to what we normally do. I've been reading quite a bit over the last two years since the tractor fire accident. I've been reflecting on life and asking why. I thought I'd find answers in books, so I just started reading. And then, then I ran into a problem. I wasn't getting through them fast enough. I would have stacks of books just all over the floor. Not that it looks anything different right now, but I set the goal of reading one book a week to resolve the issue. And so we concluded 2019 having read a book for 35 straight weeks. I broke that streak early this year, but we'll shoot to make this one a little bit longer. And right now we're on two straight. I view life as a puzzle and I have to find puzzle pieces to put it together and make sense. So I intentionally explore for pieces in life, wherever I go and whatever I'm doing. And I found, however, that I consistently find puzzle pieces in books. So I read. And I'd like to share more of what I'm learning because I'm growing from it and, and maybe you'll also find some value in it too. So today I want to talk about Mount Analog and Jonathan Livingston Siegel. The reason I'm choosing these two is because I read them back to back and they're similar in both size and themes. Mount Analog was lent to me by Dr. Dave. I gave him a copy of Awareness and, and I was telling him about it. And he said, hold on, I think I have a book you'll like. And he sprinted to his apartment and returned with a book, Mount Analog. His apartment wasn't that far, it was like a block away. It's by a, a French spiritual surrealist poet slash writer named Rene Dumas, and it was published in 1952. It's about a group of people who attempt to find and climb a mountain that's been undiscovered. And this mountain unites heaven and earth. And there's one particular passage in the beginning that, that hooked me. It seems that around the age of adolescence, the inner life of the young human is suddenly weakened, its natural courage neutered. His thought no longer dares to confront reality or mystery face to face directly, but endeavors to regard them through the opinions of grown ups, through the books and courses of professors. Yet the smaller inner voice is not entirely extinguished, and sometimes it cries out when it can, whenever a jolt of existence loosens the gag. It cries out its questions, but we immediately stifle it. Well, we already understand each other a little. I can tell you then that I am afraid of death. Not what we imagine about death, for this fear is itself imaginary. Not of my death whose date will be recorded in the civic registers of the state, but the death I suffer every moment of the death of that voice which out of the depths of my childhood keeps asking, as does yours, what am I? What's really interesting is that Dumal died of tuberculosis at age 36 before he finished the book. So the book is actually unfinished, it just ends. So there's all this speculation around it and people analyze uh, his next chapter notes and outlines. The book is kind of, it's kind of weird and hard to follow at times. And I'm not sure if it's because he just didn't finish it or because it was just his style. So it's, it's something to consider. The other book is Jonathan Livingston Siegel. I came across this book after Kobe Bryant's death. It was apparently his favorite book or, or one of his favorite books. And I was, in, I was in Paris when he died and it was, it was like 9.30, 10.30 at night and I'd just gotten back to my hostel and my room card key wasn't working. So I waited in line at the front desk and there was this younger fella in front of me and a friend walked up to him and asked, did you hear the news? What news, he responded. Kobe Bryant died. My heart dropped. It just seemed so ridiculous to me. Because, you know, nowadays it's not uncommon for someone to be trending online as having passed. And I remember too, it was like two months ago before that, I was at a bar and the bartender announced that Mike Tyson had passed. So with the Kobe Bryant news, I was skeptical and I didn't believe it. Especially Kobe, right? So I asked the guy, how did he die? Helicopter crash, he answered. Sure enough, it was confirmed as soon as I went online, um, but it's, it's still really surreal that Kobe is gone, no longer with us. He was so full of life and 
he embodied the message in a number of books that I've read. And I recalled a video I watched about about a year ago of my guy Giannis talking about his experience working out with Kobe. So he really looked up to Kobe and they're kind of cut from the same cloth. They want to be the best and they want to work hard to reach it. So Giannis said, Kobe told him that the most important thing was to always think like a kid. I can understand why Kobe liked Jonathan Livingston Siegel so much. It's about the pursuit of freedom of his true self. So a seagull, all he wants to do is just fly. He wants to keep learning how to fly faster and higher. And the flock, on the other hand, just wants to eat breadcrumbs and exist. So they kick him out of the flock and he's an outcast. So he continues, though, to become a greater and greater flyer. And then he teaches other outcast seagulls how to fly. This book is full of good quotes. Let me, let me read a few. We can lift ourselves out of ignorance. We can find ourselves as creatures of excellence and intelligence and skill. We can be free. We can learn how to fly. It always works when you know what you're doing. We're free to go where we wish and to be what we are. The only true law is that which leads to freedom. There is no other. Don't believe what your eyes are telling you. All they show is limitation. Look with your understanding. Find out what you already know and you will see the way to fly. Heaven is not a place and it's not a time. Heaven is being perfect. Kobe!